crushing and the pressing and new wine that we had. And, um, hopefully this is what's going to be happening today. <laughs> that we can get rid of some of the old wine and we can prepare the skin for the new stuff that's coming in. So we're just going to be looking at, um, I think, I've got a book at home, it's the names of God. And one of the names I came across was El El Yon. Um, it should be up there in a minute. E L E L Y O N, meaning Most High God, the Highest, the Exalted One. And we're going to be looking at Daniel, where um, that word is mentioned. Not El El Yon, but Most High God is referred to several times. So if you open up your Bibles at Daniel chapter 4. Um, I'm going to pray first. So Father, um, this isn't just a story about King Nebuchadnezzar. It is that, but it's also you're wanting us to look at our own hearts. And um, the word that is the paramount in this story that came out is pride. And Father, we can look at the king and say, well, I'm not a king. I've got nothing to be proud of. I don't have pride in me. We can certainly see pride in other people. It stands out. But do we have pride in ourselves? Do we carry pride and... The answer is yes, because the only one without proud pride is Jesus. So Father, as this word comes out, I pray that the Spirit will dig deep. I pray all we need to do is say, Lord, you have my heart. Search it and reveal any wicked way in me. And there are wicked ways in me. But this morning, it will be about pride. And even when Paul was encouraging people to speak up and with their giftings, you know, pride can come into that. You can call it fear, but it's also pride. Oh, what if I get it wrong? What if I make a fool of myself? But you're doing it out of love for God and out of love for your brethren. It's not about you. And we know that from the story of King Nebuchadnezzar, it was all about him. He had become the most high. And he had to be humiliated. Now, I'm not saying that this is what God's going to do with you today or up ahead. Hopefully, it won't be. Because you will fall. If you're proud, you will be brought low. The Word of God says so. So I pray that Father, as we hear what you have to say to us today, that we will open our hearts to you and you will do a mighty work. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if we look at Daniel, um, now Daniel was a prophet. He was taken out of um, Jerusalem with the big siege where Babylon took over. And Daniel came from a, um, a noble class. Uh, uh, he was very, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar sent his men back into Jerusalem to pick up um, men that were strong and uh, intelligent and noble and of good character and bring them back because he wanted them in his courts. He wanted to raise these men up to be in his courts to support him. Uh, to turn them basically into good little Babylonians so that they would um, possibly go back to Jerusalem and um, you know contaminate Jerusalem, I don't know, but uh, he didn't know what he was dealing with when he got Daniel and his mates because they did not turn into Babylonian idol worships. They were strong in God, they were just teenagers and that is just amazing, isn't it, that through all the training under the of the pride of um, the Babylonian kingdom and everything else, 
Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego um, remain resolute and strong with their God. So uh, Daniel was promoted because he proved himself a, an honourable man. Um, you know, much as King Nebuchadnezzar was a godless man, and this is something uh, we can learn from, uh, he wasn't there praying, God, get rid of this man. You know, he's corrupting the whole of Babylon. He doesn't think the way I think. And, and you can see Daniel's heart for his king. When um, King Nebuchadnezzar had that horrific dream and Daniel interpreted it, um, Daniel said um, to the king, I wish this wasn't for you. I wish this was for one of your enemies, the, the dream and what's going to happen to you. So. We need to stop and think about how we pray for our leaders and what we speak about them. That's right. uh, we really, you know, even if that God is talking to you about that today, do it, do it. You know, we look all over the world. We can be running Biden and Trump, Trump down, but God has appointed these men. God has appointed um, our Premier and our Prime Minister. We're not told to run them down and, and ask God to send them so they go crazy and get them out of here. We're asked to bless them yes. and pray for them. So if that's you today, if you've been running the leaders of the world down, it's time to say, I'm so sorry, God, I got it wrong. I'm going to start blessing the leaders, that you would grant them wisdom, that they'd be born again, that they would rule wisely. Yes. And I guarantee this is what... Daniel was doing with King Nebuchadnezzar. You could see his heart for him. So anyway, um, Daniel had already um, interpreted a dream. That was one of the giftings that God had given him among many. And he wasn't scared to use them, was he? He went along and interpreted one of, um, another one of um, um, Nebuchadnezzar's... I'll just call him the king, because that's a big name to say. The king's dreams. And then the king said, you know, started worshipping God and saying, well, he's a great and mighty God, he's the most high, he's revealed this to me. But that didn't last long, of course, as it, as it doesn't even with us sometimes. Anyway, if we go to um, chapter 4, um, verse 4. Uh, this is um, the king's second dream. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was a very powerful, um, very rich. He, he was just great, a great king in his eyes and in the eyes of the world. No one could defeat him practically. So, um, so he was flourishing, it says, in his palace, palace. So he had everything his heart could desire. He had the wives and the money and the prestige and the fame. And I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts on my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. So even though he had it all, God was trying to get through to him, and the way he got through to Nebuchadnezzar was with his dreams. So of course he runs to Daniel again, and uh, Daniel asks God, when we look at the, what Daniel did with that other dream, um, the first dream that Daniel had, um, in chapter 2, verse 23, you can just turn back a few pages if you've got it, we can see Daniel's humility. He wasn't running around and saying, well, I can do it, O King, God, you know, I can um, interpret your dreams, I did it before and I've done it lots of times. He thanked God for that gift. And in verse 23 he says, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and might. So he acknowledged that it was God that had given him the wisdom and the, and the might and the ability to interpret. So it wasn't all about Daniel. So um, his dream, verse 24 to 27. I won't go into what the dream was, I'll just go into the interpretation because it will take too long. Um, now it's pretty horrific this. They shall drive you, verse 25, they shall drive you from men, your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat 
grass like oxen. So he was going to be on his hands and knees, this mighty king who was wealthy and who controlled all of Babylon and everything around it, on his hands and knees eating grass. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, so he'll be out in the open fields, and seven times shall pass over you. So we don't know if that was, I don't think it was seven days, I think it was more than seven weeks. It, it was seven times, it doesn't say what it is. It would have been seven years, we don't know. Wow. Till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. So this is El Elyon, the Most High God. Um, and King Nebuchadnezzar had made himself the Most High. He had not bowed the knee to the Most High God, El Elyon. Inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, so in the dream that there was some of this left, um, so what, he wasn't completely removed. Your kingdom shall be assured to you after you know that heaven rules. So he said, your kingdom will be restored to you after you've come to your senses. And verse 27, and this is um, Daniel's heart for his king. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. So um, perhaps there may be an opening of your prosperity. So this was going to happen, but um, God could um, hold it back for a time or the time that uh, if he repented, if he broke off his sins, you know, the biggest sins in Nebuchadnezzar was pride. This hasn't been mentioned, but pride will stop the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life if it's not dealt with. Um, by being righteous, and that's get into right standing with God. See who is the most high God. It's not you, King. Um, and have mercy on the poor. So much as he was wealthy and prestigious and everything else, he wasn't getting it right. He wasn't looking after the poor. So, um, you know, and God, this is, a this is um, God's heart for us as well. He woos us, he calls us, he chastises us, he reminds us where we're out of order. And this is Daniel doing to the king. You're out of order. This is why this is happening to you. But if you repent, if you turn from your sins, if you start looking after the poor, there's hope for you. God can change his mind. Uh, but, of course, the king didn't listen, did he? We go down and after that it says his humiliation. So he continued in his merry way, flourishing and prospering and counting his coins and uh, commanding people left, right and centre, doing what a king does. And at the end of 12 months, it says, in verse 29, he was walking about the royal palace in Babylon. And it sort of reminds you of King David. Remember when he should have been out of war and he wasn't? And he got into mischief, didn't he? <coughs> so um, this is God calling Nebuchadnezzar. Walking about the royal palace of Babylon. And verse 30 says, The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honour of my majesty? <laughs> so, you know, we think, oh, well, I can't compete. <laughs> That's not me. But it is. It's us in other ways. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times seven shall pass over you, until you know 
that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and he gives it to whomever he chooses. And 33 is quite a horrific picture. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. So this is pride and humiliation. I'm just going to read a few um, definitions of pride. Refusing to recognise God's sovereign role in everything. That's the king and that's us. Excessive belief in one's own abilities. So the king believed that he had built up the kingdom in his own strength and by his own power and, and, and his cleverness. And we can be the same. We can have a ministry, we can have property, and we can take all the glory. Look how much money I've got in the bank. Look what I'm doing for God. Look at how clever I am. Look how, um, you know, all the instruments I play. play. Look how I can sing, whatever. Um, if there's an excessive belief in that you did it all for yourself, it's you that's done it all, that's pride. Excessive preoccupation with self and one's importance. And we see this in the king. And it can happen to us as well. And pride, mm -hmm. it is just so subtle. I, I was reading a book by um, Brother Yun, he, um, and it's called Living Water. And he says, flesh is a cunning enemy that is always seeking a way to deceive you. And to me, pride is that. It is insidious, it is hideous, and it stinks. It's just horrible. And, you know, my prayer is that God will reveal pride in us today. You could have a lot of it, you can have a little bit of it, you can think, oh, I haven't got it. You know, what have I got to be proud about? You can be proud about the fact that you haven't got anything. You know, <laughs> I don't know. But it's really hard to put your finger on it. But yeah, anyway, and um, mm -hmm. so, and Philippians 2, 3 tells us, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Um, so if you're full of pride and you think you've got it all, you know it all, are you esteeming the others around you? You know, you're thinking, well, I'm better than them. You know, they're down here, I've got this and I can do that. They can't do any of that. That is pride. St. Augustine, a quote from him, pride changed angels into devils. And we know Lucifer got proud. He, want, he exalted himself. He wanted to be God. So he, and he took his cohorts and those angels were turned into devils. It is humility that makes men as angels. And we don't want to be like angels, we want to be like Jesus, don't we? So this is where um, we're crying out for our pride to be uncovered and for humility um, to be on us. Um, now, the next part is, oh yeah, when um, The king came to his senses while he was chewing the grass and um, his hair was getting long and his claws. And, uh, in verse 34 in chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar praises God. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. And I praised the Most High and praised and honoured him who lives forever. And when we look at um, Job 28, 28, it says, Behold, the, it's not up there, but um, I'll read it. Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. 
So while he was there, those seven times, whatever it was, however long, his understanding came to him. So he understood that he was a proud man, that God is the one that set up his kingdom, and he was taking all the glory for himself. He stepped out of being proud, which is evil, and to depart from evil. He stepped out of the evil of pride and repented of it, and understanding came to him. He didn't have the fear of the Lord in him before, did he? Because who did he fear? He didn't fear God, he didn't fear man, he was the king. Um, so he wasn't really wise because he didn't have the fear of the Lord in him. Okay. Well, that is up there. Um, um, I'm just going to read out some scriptures about pride and um, what happens. So the first one up there is Proverbs 11.2. When pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. So a lot of us have carried shame a lot of our lives in one way or another, and we don't want any more, do we? Proverbs 16.18. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. 19, Proverbs 29.23. A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honour. James 4.6 and 4.10. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Who wants God to resist them? We want our prayers answered. Imagine having God resisting you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And I think that pride, that probably the first step is, Lord, I can't see pride in me, but I want you to reveal it, or if you know you have it. It's repentance, isn't it? and ask God to burn it out. Matthew 18.4 Therefore whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Micah 6.8 He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly so the king wasn't doing justly, he wasn't looking after the poor. To love mercy, he wasn't being merciful to the poor. And to walk humbly with your God. And that was all missing as well. And we can say the words, can't we? We can say, humble me, Lord, forgive me for pride, but it's still stuck there, isn't it? It's really hard to get rid of what it is with me. And, you know, pride is sin, isn't it? It's sin. It's evil. Sin is evil. And pride is sinful. We don't think it is. We think it's all right to be proud. Because this is how Satan has hidden it and disguised it. But we've got to remember, the most high God, you are higher than me, God. I'm not the highest. I think I am. I think I'm the best at everything. I've got this. I've got that. I can do this, I can do that. And we, sure, that's good. And, and sometimes you work to, to improve yourself, and that, that is all very good. But it's, um, it's the pride that sneaks in. When, when you're very gifted, pride can um, have a field, field day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at some questions. And the first question is, what happens when humans forget who is highest in heaven and on earth? Anyone got an answer to that? Yes? Well, we could end up like Nebuchadnezzar. I know. Scary. Well, that's how serious pride is. It, it, it's big stuff. And we think, well, my pride's not like the king's, you know. But we 
we've still got it there. And he refused, we can refuse even today, in the days ahead, to let God look in at our hearts and reveal the pride. Nebuchadnezzar refused Daniel's advice. God was chastising him. He was giving him an opportunity to repent. He refused <coughs> it. You don't know whether you've got tomorrow. Let's do it. We've got to do it today. Um, he'd lost the reverential and worshipful fear of God. He'd lost it. And that's what we need back in the church. You know, you look at the churches around and you look at some of the leaders and they're full of it, aren't they? I've got a church of 20,000 and I went to a tent meeting and I spoke to 50,000 and I've done this and I've done that. And Did we ever, ever hear Jesus speak about what it was like in heaven? I was up there with God and it was wonderful and I was sitting next to God and he never spoke about what it was like in heaven with God before he came to earth. He never spoke about, I delivered 20 guys from demons the other day and um, I healed all the lepers. And he never, ever spoke about what he had done. He gave the glory to God. He was about the Father's business, wasn't he? Yeah. About the kingdom of God. He wasn't about promoting himself. He was about promoting the Father. <laughs> And it's horrific. It's just horrible hearing people promoting themselves all the time. I'd probably do it myself, and, and I hate it. Excuse me, Mr. We were watching um, uh, this interview with this uh, top preacher, and he's being interviewed by a secular person. And you know, he said, "Why have you got two jets?" And he said, "Oh, because you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in a, a normal." Aeroplane with all with all those other people because they all got demons, you know. So I don't want to ride with all the demons, and that's where how we justify having two jets, not even one jet, but then two jets. That was crazy. Yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> okay, the second question: Why this kind of punishment for the king? It's probably the only way he would hear. Yeah. And have they warned? Yeah. He had. And have they warned? And I think also this is something God wants us to grab a hold of. That it is serious business business. Pride is a serious thing. And I can't help wondering if the Lord knows exactly what is needed. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. each particular person. Yeah. So we've yeah. all got different kinds and different amounts of God. So if the Lord knows that's yeah. Exactly how to humble us until yeah. we exalt him. I know. We, we just, just want to run, run a mile from that sort of humiliation, don't we? Um, okay. The next question. Three. What does this story reveal about the link between sanity and humility? <laughs> because we've got all these mental health problems in our society and if all those people would yes. just go to the Bible yes. and read the story you just read to us, oh my goodness, yes. how would yes. they be healed in an instant? Yes. And, and lack of humility is lack of bearing the need to God, isn't it? Yes. The first commandment, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. So pride is disobedience. Um, not acknowledging that God is the creator, not bowing the knee. You're greater than God, you don't need God. Um, you've made an idol of yourself, really. I can do it, I don't need God. And we just have to look at the world today. You hear people saying, it's gone insane. Don't you? You hear that word, the world has gone. And that's because of pride. That's because they're not bowing the knee to the Most High God. And 
And um, Daniel 7.14, I'll just read that out, 7.14. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations and languages would serve him. That's God. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall never be destroyed. So Nebuchadnezzar, um, he'd already heard that, um, because Daniel had told him that king, kingdoms will pass, there'll be other kingdoms, and it's God that appoints the kingdoms, he appoints the kings, he raises them up, he brings them down. It's God alone that does that. Even with our rules, it's God that appoints, God that gets rid of, God that brings up new ones. Whether they're the ones we want or not is up to God. He chooses. And God's kingdom is one that will never pass away. And there's no point worshipping and looking to man, because he's going to go, isn't he? Whereas God will always be there, and his kingdoms will always be there. So then we go to question four. And this is very easy, if anyone wants to answer this one. Who was the source of um, the king's prosperity and greatness? All together. <laughs> yes. Okay, then we're going to go to some self stuff. Number five. How have we been tempted to take credit for our blessings and our giftings? And that made me think of when we were in the womb. Um, you know, the, the Bible talks about he formed us in the womb. Um, he chose. We didn't choose what parents were going to have. We didn't choose what colour eyes were going to have. We didn't choose the level of intelligence in us. That all came from God's choice to put us in that particular family we were put, put in. So um, everything we have, sure we can, um, you know, if he's given us things, we can train them, can't we? We can improve on them if he's given us abilities with a musical instrument, because mum and dad were musical and my grandparents were. You can still practice it and perfect it, but it's God that gave you that gift to do those things. And this is where pride has to get squashed. Okay, so I've got the family we come from. Name throwing. Connections. How many degrees you have. Where you've been, what you've done. That's how you can take credit for your blessings and your giftings. When you hear people talk about, oh, when I was over in Africa, or when I was over in Fiji, and when I did ministry there. Or, um, just, sure, it's good to hear that, but only at a certain level. <laughs> it gets to you otherwise, you know, you just feel it in yourself. Oh, they're bragging, they're full of themselves. Because we didn't hear Jesus do that, did we? We didn't. And he's the one we're to follow. You know, he was the humblest man out. And it says in Ephesians 5.1, Therefore be imitators of God. We've got to speak the way Jesus spoke. It wasn't about, he wasn't promoting himself. He um, was promoting God. So uh, question six is next. I can find it. Okay, what is most high in your life? Consume your thoughts you think most about, you dream about. Okay, you might say God is most high in your life. But what bombards you and comes in instead of God? You know, it can be that computer, can't it? You could be listening to sermons all the time and you think, I spent time with God. I thought, no, you didn't. Spending time with God is being with Him alone and listening. Worshipping him, praising him, not listening. You know, I, I know people that will listen to five, six, seven sermons a day and I think, I can go crazy. I'll end up like the King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, is it your health? Is it your finances? Are you always thinking about how to make more money? Or are you always thinking about the money dwindling? Is it your family? Your marriage? Your ministry? Is it the world, the state of the world? 
Is it coming down on you? Is that raised up higher than God in your life? Is it fear? Is it getting old? Are you really worried about getting old? Does that worry you all the time? Sport even. Is that most high in your life? Um, your friends, your business, yourself. Colossians 3, 2 and 3 tells us, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Did we ever see Jesus worrying about his health? <laughs> There's never any mention of it, is it? You know, he never said to the disciples, pray for me, I've got a pain in my side. You know, he wasn't um, consumed with his health or with his finances. It says he never had anywhere to lay his head, you know. Um, he wasn't carrying, wheeling along a great big suitcase full of clothes wherever he went. Um, he wasn't consumed with his family. You never heard him talk about his family. Twice he mentioned his mother, never talked about Joseph. Um, his brothers were thinking he was crazy and giving him a hard time. He wasn't saying, would you guys pray for my brothers? They're not walking with me, they don't believe in me. He wasn't. He was about the Father's business and how he could bring the kingdom of God down to earth. Number seven, what threatens you? Okay, so whatever you're frightened of, what threatens you will be what is bombarding you. And it will become higher than El, El Yon. It will become higher than God. Is it financial insecurity? Is it ill health? Is it a marriage? Is it the world, family, old age? No matter how big your problem is, God is still greater. Mm -hmm. And Psalm 91, most of us know that psalm. Um, but we go to the secret place of the Most High, don't we? And He's our refuge and our help. Now, I had um, a little um, <coughs> table here. Is that up there? The how to pray, repent, obey, and believe. Oh yeah, right at the top, yeah. So just say you're really consumed with finances. That's become most high in your life. So what you do is you go to the secret place of the most high, don't you? You go to God and you say, God, I'm sick of worrying about money all the time. I'm sick of watching my bank account dwindle. The prices are going up. We've been told to store food. What's going to happen to me? All these fears. And it's looming high. So you come to, to God with that. You repent. What do you repent of? Yeah. Repent of what? Worry. Yeah. Repent of not trusting God. It's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. You're his kid. He says in his word, he'll provide. Supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. So you repent of not believing that God is a, he will supply all your needs. Then obey. He might be telling you to do something. Okay, I'm going to help you get rid of this fear, this threat in your life, this thing that is looming higher than me in your life. Um, and he, he might tell you what you can do. Sometimes we have to do a step of faith. And you might say, okay, you're tithing $20 a week, a fortnight or whatever. I want you to put in 100 Yikes. You know, you don't know. Okay, if, if God will tell each person a different thing, you might not have trouble with finances. They might not be looming high in your life. But if you feel this is what God, and you're not sure, go to someone and, and get confirmation. So obey and then believe he's going to get this huge thing that's um, exalting itself in your life. He's going to break its hold on you. And you can be proud in this. You can be... Um, continue on in your um, financial disarray, um, thinking, well, it's always been like that. God can't help me. It's not going to change. And that's pride, isn't it? Not believing that God's your provider, not believing what God says. Your marriage is the same. 
pray, repent, and repent is asking God, what have I done? Or a relationship even. What is my role in this? How have I soured relationship with whoever? And he might ask you to do something about it. He might want you to fast and pray. He might want you to go to that person and ask you to forgive them for your role in severing the relationship, whatever it is, and to believe that God is going to um, heal because he's a restorer. The same with your health, if you're worried about your health. Um, he might bring you to repent about something. Repent of not believing the word. That's the boys. <laughs> Uh, you might not be eating well, you might not be exercising, you might be sitting on the couch watching TV seven hours a day. Um, you might be saying, I want you to get up and walk for half an hour. Obey and believe that it is the Lord that healeth you. Uh, any of those things that threaten you that have become most high in your life. Um, and on a regular basis, um, if, if the finances aren't shifting, go back to God again and believe that he wants to um, um, bless you in that area. Psalm 53, 2 and 3 says, I will cry out to God most high. And I pray that this is what we're all doing today and in the days ahead. To cry out that he would reveal every scary of pride in us. And we're all different. We've all got different levels and we've all got different things we're proud about. To God who performs all things for me, he shall send forth from heaven and save me. Isn't that beautiful? He wants us free from this sin, from this wickedness, from this evil. He reproaches the one who will swallow me up. Pride will swallow you up. You will be humbled. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. And that's the prayer, that he will be merciful to us. And his truth, his truth will uncover where we've been proud. Um, we were singing that song about um, the crushing and the pressing and stuff. And we know that the church is being purified and refined. Because God is wanting to prevent and to present the bride to his son when he returns, isn't he? And when you think about Queen Esther, she spent 12 months getting prepared to go into the, into the king. She was perfumed and pampered and um, so it's a process. That's how we want to be. We don't want to come before Jesus thinking, do we? No, we don't. Um, There's a few little scary scriptures. Twelve, I have to finish. Do you want to finish on these scary scriptures or not? Do you want to hear them? No. Well, I've been scared about them. Okay. Um, Alright, I'll just give you something to... Who wants to hear when they stand before God? Can say, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. That just terrifies me. And we're told in Philipp that's in Matthew 7 23. <coughs> At Matthew 7 23 and Matthew 7 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And the will of the Father in heaven is walking in obedience, submission to God most high. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We have to work on our salvation. Sure, we lined up and came to the Lord like you saw there, whatever we did. But there's more. Isn't there? We have to get rid of the filth and the evil and the unbelief and the pride. So that's Philippians 2.12. Hebrews 12.14. Work at living in peace with everyone 
and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. So they're the scary ones I've left you with. Um, yeah. So, do we have anything else now? I'll just pray before we go. So, Father, we just thank you that your love for us is so intense, it is so fervent, and your grace is so abundant. But, Lord, you want us to be the spotless bride, and you want us to carry your glory, carry your fragrance, just as Esther carried a beautiful fragrance when she went into the king. We need to carry a beautiful fragrance as we walk around the streets, as we meet with one another. Lord, I ask, we all ask that you would search our hearts and reveal to us what we have to do about the pride in our lives. And we thank you that you will do it when we're open and our hearts are soft towards you. And I, I just thank you, Lord, that, that there's going to be a mighty work, not, not just here, but in your church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, if anyone wants any prayer, um, go to someone that you want to go to, and we can pray for you.